What is happening, people? My name is Brian Alzru, and I tend to train a little bit differently than most people watching this. And a lot of people have questions about it, so I just thought I'd take a little bit of time and kind of lay it out. So the reason why I train so differently is because a lot of my goals are different. I am a competitive strongman, and I've gotten to a decently high level. I have some really good powerlifting numbers in the gym. I actually have not done an actual powerlifting meet yet. Uh, I have an MMA and combat sports background, and I spent a good bit of time in the counterterrorism world where I was away traveling all the time or in other countries and did not have a whole lot of time to train. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. All of these things combined have kind of meshed my training system into kind of a mess that no one else really does, but I've started to apply it to some of my athletes and I've had some really great success in building some, some really good people and it also tends to take people's two hour training sessions and cut them down to about one hour. So if you guys have just suffered some sort of big life change as like you just got a new job or you have a kid or you just had a big move and you don't have as much time in your life or you just have some bigger priorities, this might help you out as well. So um, that's just the basic idea of what's going on with me. Any type of my training session, what typically goes on is I train about four times a week on average for about an hour and a half each time. And on my off days, I will do active recovery stuff, but not like gym active recovery stuff. I'm not coming in and doing extra conditioning. I might be out kayaking or hiking or doing something active, but I actually only spend four days a week actually training. However, when I train, I kind of train like a maniac. So let me explain a little bit. First off, the first 10 to 12 minutes of any of my days is always going to be conditioning. Um, now, when I'm talking about conditioning, I'm not talking about like going on a slow jog on a treadmill or like rolling out on a foam roller. Uh, I'm talking about puke my brains out, go as hard as I possibly can for 10 minutes. And the reason why I do this is because of my MMA background. If you guys ever watch fighters come out to the ring or to the cage, they're never cold, all right? A lot of weightlifters, uh, and I'm not saying they're right or wrong, I'm just saying this is my experience and this is what I do, but a lot of weightlifters believe that they need to save every single ounce of energy that they possibly can to go into that one big attempt or that one big lift. And in the MMA world and the fighting world, it's kind of the complete opposite. If you go into a fight completely cold trying to save all your energy, then typically you're flat and you're not doing as well and you can't turn that, flip that switch and do what you need to do. So what they do is they kind of prime their central nervous system. They prime their just minds and their mindset and everything getting ready to go by doing something hard. So when they're in the back hitting mitts or grappling or rolling around, so when they come out to the ring, they've already blown out their first lung. Kind of like if any of you guys go for any type of running or any type of conditioning, if you go for a run, typically your first little bit is the hardest because you're trying to regulate your breathing, you're trying to get a rhythm, all that's messed up, right? So when you get to a ring and you're going to get into a fight where someone's going to kick you in the head, you don't want to be figuring those things out. You already want it there. So my background was always come into your hard work sweating and then when it got into counterterrorism, the thought process was always like you're never going to be ready, right? You're always going to be tired. Either your sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight is going to kick in and you're going to be exhausted. It's not going to be a perfect situation. So you better be able to perform on demand, not perform when the conditions are best. So for that reason, I always do my conditioning, tend to do my conditioning first. I will do a finisher last, but conditioning usually 10, 12 minutes so that when I get into my actual strength work, I'm already sweating profusely, but I'm a sweater, so that's not hard to do. Now, when I do my strength work, it's actually in a giant set form, um, very similar to like a circuit training type of thing. And it's basically because I didn't have a lot of time to work out, so I needed to fit more in a short amount of time. And in order to do that, I didn't want to tax myself unreasonably. So I still kept my four basic workouts per week based around the squat, the bench, the deadlift, and for me, the overhead press because I'm a strong man. But the first part of my strength work was always that antagonistic muscle group, all right? Um, so basically, if I'm going to be doing a push movement, like an overhead press, I will do the pull movement first. So I might do a row here to a bench press if my main thing for that day is based around the bench, okay? First exercise of my giant set is going to be a row because it's an antagonistic movement. Second is going to be my bench press, which is my main mover. I like to do the antagonistic before the main mover, mainly because for me personally, I feel like I can get more fluid into my joints. Basically, I get less pain out of my pressing if I do some sort of pulling beforehand. And it also tends to have zero negative effect 
on my actual pressing strength. So uh, that's how I lay it out. Now, the third exercise in my giant set is always typically some sort of core exercise, um, depending on the day and depending on what I'm working on. Now, when I say core exercise, I'm not laying on the ground and doing crunches. I'm trying to do things that are going to directly impact what I'm doing. So if it is a squat or a deadlift day, I will do a core exercise that is gonna focus on the breathing process the same exact way that I would on my squat or deadlift. So I will never be trying to collapse my abs at all. It's always gonna be out and down and trying to brace the same way that I am on my squat or deadlift. So I'm not only getting the rest here, but I'm also cueing for my main mover when I come back. Um, now I know a lot of people don't believe in direct core work and I'm not saying it works or it doesn't work. All I'm saying is it doesn't really tire me out. And if I'm doing bench press for the day, if I do a row to a bench press, I need to rest anyway, right? So either I can check my Instagram or I can, you know, do a plank. So I'm gonna choose to do the plank and get some extra work in because I don't have a lot of time to work out. Now, for me personally, my goals are not to be the best power lifter in the world, not to be a world champion strong man, not really to be a world champion fighter. It's really to be as prepared as I possibly can for whatever life brings me. So I try to keep my body fat low, try to stay in shape, try to stay active and as athletic as I can, especially as I'm getting older. Now I'm, now I'm close to 40. So my fourth thing in the giant set is some sort of short conditioning thing, usually about 30 seconds of a, uh, some sort of hard conditioning. So it might be a burpee, it might be a battle rope, it might be an air assault bike. It could be anything that just keeps my heart rate up. After that, I will take about 90 seconds of rest. I'll add whatever weight, throw, get a sip of water, whatever, and jump right back up to the top. I'll do this for as many sets or reps, really based all around my main movement. So if I'm working like, if I'm trying to hit a top set of five on the bench, then I'm gonna be doing as many giant sets as it takes to get to that top set of bench. And then I'll back off typically after this for some volume work. Okay, um, now when I do volume work, it is almost always more technique based. I, I will take a percentage typically like, if I work up to a three rep max, I'll take like 80% of that three rep max and that's what I'll base my volume around. So it's not gonna be light. It's gonna be heavy enough that I have some sort of form breakdown uh, when I start getting tired and exhausted but I'm still mainly working my technique. I'm not trying to absolutely kill it. Really, in a lot of times, it looks more almost like bodybuilding reps at that point. I'm trying to get good squeezes, trying to get good mind-muscle connection. And then typically I end with some sort of assistance finisher. Um, now, all that's going to do is build my mindset because if you tell me to do my assistance, you tell me to do three sets of 10, I've been lifting for approximately 25 years. You tell me to do three sets of 10 or something, typically I'm like, I got a lot of other things to do and it doesn't get done or I'll cut it short or conveniently someone will come have my attention somewhere else so I won't get to do it. But if you tell me that I have 10 minutes or 12 minutes of doing something as hard as I possibly can that's just gonna finish off the main muscle groups that I was working that day, then I'll absolutely do it. So let's just say we're gonna keep it body weight to keep it as simple as possible for the video. Um, since we're working the bench, uh, my assistance finisher, I might drop down and do one push-up, stand back up. And I'll drop down, do two push-ups, stand back up. Drop down, do three push-ups, stand back up. I might work my way up to 20, work my way back down. And if that doesn't sound hard, absolutely give that a try. It will absolutely destroy you. Uh, I work my chest, I work my tries. I absolutely destroy myself. All of this can get done in about an hour. So uh, now currently I'm very busy with my business and everything else going on in my gym. But... Uh, so I, that's all I do, that's it. Four times a week, I train super, super hard like this. I'm still able to keep my squat, my deadlift, everything up high and strong uh, to be competitive with my powerlifting guys, my powerlifting guys who are much stronger than me, but they still respect what I'm doing, my strongman people I can still keep up with, yet I'm still mobile and athletic enough to do my MMA stuff, and on my off days, I'm doing hiking, I'm doing kayaking, I'm doing active things, so I'm not so beat up that I can't uh, enjoy other things in life. And the best part about it is it only takes me about an hour, four times a week, sometimes an hour and a half, depending on how much I'm recording for my channel. So uh, yeah, that's basically what I do for my training these days.